the converter. Okay, so we start with the first one. Okay, uh, the access number one. Okay, semua boleh nampak ke? Everyone can see this uh, exercise? Can. All right, okay. Boleh. So for the um, example here, okay, uh, giving a boost converter uh, with an output voltage of 12 volt. Okay, V0 is equal to 12 volt over here. And then uh, it uh, supply a load current, which is your I node uh, output current of 1.5 M. Okay, and then in this example over here, the input voltage, our VS, is varying from 5 volt to 8 volt. Okay, and then uh, a control system is used to adjust the duty cycle accordingly to keep the voltage, output voltage remain constant. Okay, what does it mean by this control circuit over here? Okay, in this exercise, uh, um, in terms of calculation, you uh, this information is not being used, but in your lab, this control system, what, uh, what does it mean is that what are the control methods that you use in order to produce a pulses for your gate terminal for your switch, all right? So for your switch, uh, we have three terminal, our collector, uh, git and also our um, emitter. So we need to uh, produce a pulses to our git. So this control uh, circuit over here, okay, if let's say that in the lab for the OEL, there are two ways you can um, use a control, uh, you can use a control circuit. One is that by using a pulse generator which is, this one will give you a fixed pulses. Okay, what does it mean by fixed pulses is that the duty cycle that will be given is 50% or um, 0.5 in terms of duty cycle. Okay, if let's say that you calculate your duty cycle in this exercise, you get the duty cycle is 0 0.5. Yes, you can use the pulse generator, but if let's say that you get other than 0 0.5, so you need to use the second control circuit, which is by using PWM. Okay, you can refer in the lecture notes on bulk converter part A. Okay, I did mention uh, on the, what is PWM is all about. Okay, so we need to use this PWM, which is consists of two signal. We have the reference signal, VREF, and also the carrier signal, V carrier. Okay, so these two signal will be fit into a comparator. So the output of this comparator uh, will be a set of zero and one, high and low. And these uh, pulses will be fit into your gate terminal of your switch. Okay, um, later I will uh, show you, uh, I will upload a demo using MATLAB and PCM. Uh, the demo video using PCM is, or, uh, is ready, but in using MATLAB, uh, I have some a big problem with my MATLAB software, so currently I'm still working on it. So maybe for the MATLAB demo, a bit, maybe somewhere around tonight or maybe tomorrow morning. I will upload it after this session. All right, okay. Okay, and then, um, okay, in this exercise, the switching frequency that being given is 500 kilohertz over here. Okay, so you need to find the value of inductor, giving that the variation of inductor current. Delta IL is no more than 40% of average inductor current. So in this example, specifically, it mentioned that in order for you to find the value for your inductor L, you need to use the second approach, which is um, delta IL is 40% of your IL. So you need to find your IL first, your average inductor current, and then multiply by 0.4, you'll be able to get your delta IL and use delta IL equation to find the value of your L. All right, and then, why is that this is small d, yeah? Right, and then you need to find the maximum and minimum 
uh, inductor current, IL max and IL min. Okay. And okay, after that, uh, you need to find the value for the capacitor. C giving the output voltage ripple is 1.5%. So this output voltage ripple uh, is delta V0 over V0 uh, equals to 1.5%. Right. And finally, you need to give some justification on the selected value of N inductor. Eh? N inductor maksudnya, there will be only a single inductor that will be selected. If let's say that from the calculation, you have like four value of inductor. So among these four value, you need to select only one value because in the circuit, there is only one inductor that being connected in the circuit as well as for the capacitor. All right. So make sure um, oh, apa, uh, once you do all the calculation, you need to have some kind of a bit of uh, conclusion or a bit of comment on what are the value uh, that you are selecting and why you are selecting that value, all right? Okay, so we go for the uh, answer for this exercise. Okay, first thing first, you need to find your duty cycle. Okay, since uh, in this example over here, we have two uh, input voltage, one is equals to five volt, one is eight volt, yeah? So that is why we will have two duty cycle. So we have, one is for the 5 volt, uh, Vs equals to 8 volt. So, so the, we will have these two duty cycle over here. I put it as uh, D1 and D2. Okay, D1 is when your Vs equals to 5 volt and D2 is when your Vs equals to 8 volt. Okay, so you will get these two um, value of duty cycle over here. Right? Okay, and then for the second step, okay, once we already know these two value of duty cycle, uh, we need to find the value of R because um, in order to, to proceed with uh, finding the rest of the parameter, you need R. So you need to make sure that you know what is the value of your resistor, right? So for the value of your resistor, R will be equals to, we apply the Ohm's law, V equals to IR. Um, okay, in the question, it gives you uh, output voltage, uh, output current is 1.5 amp. So 12 uh, divided by 1.5, you will get 8 ohm. All right. Okay. Right. And then, uh, okay, uh, for the, the third step over here, we need to find our IL. Why we need to find our IL is that we need to find our L using delta IL equation. And that delta IL equation is 40% of your average inductor current. So you need to find your delta IL first, right? So since we have okay. For IL2 here, uh, this is D2, eh? so D2 is over here, okay? So you use the um, equation that been given in the lecture notes, substitute the value, so you will get your IL1 will be equals to 3.59 ampere, okay? So for IL2 here, okay, using D2, you will get um, your current is 2.25 ampere, okay? So, and then from here, okay, from the value from uh, part three, we can proceed in part four uh, in finding what is our delta IL over here, all right? So your delta IL, since we have two values, two values, one, okay, uh, I am one, okay. So zero point four multiplied by three point five nine, you will get one point four three six ampere. All right, and then for delta I L two, okay, the same approach, which is uh forty percent of 
So far so good. Okay, good. Do you have any question? Ada soalan tak? No question. Right. Senang lah macam ni saya. Okay. So we proceed uh, in finding the rest of the parameter. Uh, okay. So for step number five, we need to find the value of inductor. Okay, we need to use this um, equation over here. This delta IL equation over here. Okay, so since kita ada two delta IL uh, value, so we will have two value of inductor. Okay, substitute the value over here. Okay, Vs D1, T, T is 1 over 500K over L. So L is the one that we want to find. Okay, so you'll get L1 will be equals to three, uh, 33.1 milli Henry. Okay, and then for uh, delta IL2, okay, substitute the value. Okay, this one, okay, this is uh, D2, eh? So this is D2. Okay, this one is D1. Okay, right. Okay. All right, so you will get L2 will be equals to 48.2. 28 milli Henry. So from these two value, okay, um, since, okay, for the, um, these two value over here, in order for you to decide which value you are uh, selecting, um, the punya key point is that you need to make sure whatever value of L must, your L must be greater than your L min. So by right, you should uh, calculate what is your L min. Okay, and then you compare uh, apa, uh, the value between L1 and L2. Okay, uh, normally, if you are using uh, the second approach, which is uh, your delta IL is 40% of your average inductor current, regardless of these two value, okay, these two value will be normally, eh, tapi you need to confirm lah, eh, Okay, these two value L1 and L2, okay, normally it will be greater than L min. Okay, but you need to confirm, so you need to calculate L min first and then you compare uh, whether L1 is it greater than L min, L2 is it greater than L min. Okay, but in a typical condition, these two value will be greater than L min. Alright. So if, let's say that these two value is greater than L min, you can choose any one of the value. Should be no problem. All right? Okay, but to be safe, normally we will use uh, the highest value. among. So the higher value among these two. All right? So why is that we are using the highest value among all the calculated L? Is that we want to make sure that our converter is operated in continuous conduction mode okay so that is why we choose the highest value so this is like the, the safe value okay but if let's say that you calculate like this uh, four value or this three value let's say in, in other example and all these three value is greater than L min so you can choose a bit lower um, uh, a bit lower value okay because if let's say that you are using higher value okay high value of l you know this is l is your storage right so it will contribute to high losses to your uh, system so whenever your losses is increased it will reduce your efficiency so that is why um uh, so, um, when, when you want to choose the value of inductor or the value of capacitor, uh, is bear in mind and make sure that the value is not, um, as long as it's uh, greater than L mean, should be okay. Alright? Okay. Okay, and then on uh, in step number six, okay, we need to find IL max and IL mean. <coughs> So since we have two value of L, 
Okay, so we need to find these two value lah. Yeah. Okay, I L max one, which is referring to L one. Okay, so I'm using the I L one. Okay, and also this one is also delta I L one. Okay, so we will get I L max one, which is it will be equals to four point three zero eight ampere. And for the minimum, uh, you just change the sign over here. Okay, from plus to minus, then you will get your minimum inductive current will be equals to 2.872 ampere. Okay, and then this is using uh, L2, eh? this two here, okay, using L2. Okay, so your maximum inductive current referring to L2, which is you need to refer to IL2 and also delta IL2. Right, so you will get 2.7 amp. And the minimum inductor current is 1.8 amp. Okay, for the maximum or minimum inductor current, no need for you to select anything because this is the current value. So no problem. Um, it can you can have more than one value because this is current. The only things that you need to consider or you need to select uh, normally is with regards to the passive component, which is the value of your, your inductor, and also you need to select the value for your capacitor if you have. Um, few numbers of uh, capacitor and inductor. Okay, finally, the last step. So we need to find the value for the capacitor. Okay, so uh, looking from this example, uh, the equation for the capacitor over here, we have duty cycle. Since we have two duty cycle, obviously we will get two value of capacitor. If Let's say uh, in another example, for example, um, you have you also you have variation of your output power, which is it will affect the value of your R over here. So, so which is in this one over here. So let's see C one, um, D one, okay, C R one, and. Okay, this is with respect to, let's say you have a P0 variation of, uh, let's say the mean, the max. Okay, so kita akan ada from this um, output power, we will have two value of R. Okay, so you have D1 over here. Two value of D1. So you need to make sure, okay, the first combination, okay, this this is the second combination, okay, this is first one, second one, this is the third combination, and this is the fourth combination. So you have four value of your capacitor and four value of your inductor, okay? So for uh, KD1, R1, using these two value, Okay, and then the second one is D2. D3. D3. And four. Okay. Inductor and from four. Okay, this is really what um, you will do. So, 2 is 5.5 microfarad. Okay, uh, the value for the capacity, you can select either one, no problem. Because it does not affect the boundary between the maximum, uh, the uh, CCM and also DCM. It only the higher the value of the capacitor, the the upper the ripple will uh, sorry, the better quality of your output, which is the ripple will be reduced. Eh? So this reduce in terms of ripple. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so in this example, I just choose 9.7 microfarad. Okay, right. 
Right. So, so far, uh, is there any question for the uh, solution for exercise number one? Any question? Ada soalan tak? Alamak, I cannot see the... So, so far, okay saja. Oh, so far, okay. Eh? Okay, I cannot see the comment eh. Sebab um, the, uh, my laptop is on the other room. This is... Puan, Puan nak tukar tempat sikit tak sebab rasa line Puan tak okey Line saya tak okey Ah kita dengar semua seketuk-seketuk air <laughs> ah, Madam, tadi masa Madam explain yang D1R1, D2R1 tu tak dengar sebab sekat Oh okay okay. Uh, mak mana saya nak duduk ni? Sekejap sekejap. Wait wait wait. Oh hang on. Oh. Okay wait eh. Ini <laughs> Guys, boleh dengar tak? Boleh. Boleh eh? Is it, it clear ke? Terputus-putus? Putus. Okay. Okay je. Okay. Okay. Ya putus sikit. Kejap okay, kejap tak. Okay. Uh, oh, nak Sekarang memang putus-putus lagi Puan Betul tak? Macam tadi lagi okey ya Saya tak dengar dah Memang tak dengar dah Tadi tadi lagi okey ya Tadi okey okay okay lah, sebelum ni okey dah Tadi just oh. ulang balik, tadi just ulang balik uh, certain part eh Ah okay, uh, ni line dah getting better Okay, okay. alright, uh, ulang yang mana entah lah, lupa dah Rasa Okay ni lah Tapi tau yang Okay D1 R1 uh, Alright, alright, okay um, Okay, okay, um, okay for the P out ni eh Okay, in this uh, ex, um, exercise over here, exercise number one ni Kita ada only variation of your input voltage, kan? Alright, so one, uh, so uh, that is why you will get two value of duty cycle Two value of um, inductor and two value of uh, capacitor Okay, um, um, what we call in, uh, if let's say that you have another example, okay, in the question it mentioned you, uh, there is a variation of input voltage, sama macam this example juga, okay, and then uh, it also mentioned that the load is uh, being varied, which is your output voltage is being varied, eh, sorry, your output power is being varied, P out U is being varied, so from, it's we range lah from the minimum value to the maximum value. 
Okay. So since your P out uh, is uh, have some range, so we need uh, it will um I will okay for this example over here. Ah, ni saya nampak tak tu kosong lah. Okay. Normally kita punya V out will be the same. Okay, your Vs, it will range from, let's say, Vs min to Vs max. Okay, and then your P out also will be range from minimum to maximum. Okay, so... Uh, for P out, kita akan guna, we will use this equation V naught squared over R. Okay, since our V naught is the same, kita ada variation dekat P naught. So, obviously, it will affect the value of your R. Okay, so that's why using this equation, you will get a two value of R with regards to the variation of your output power. That's me. Okay. Uh, nanti saya, uh, apa, I will repeat it again um, with regards to, because uh, there is a slide on the OEL. Uh, saya akan repeat balik eh, all this. Because I don't have enough space to write it down properly. Okay, um, okay. So once you have this, uh, two value of R, okay. Um, so you need to have, uh, in terms of, once you do the calculation, Okay, so since kita akan ada two value of uh, duty cycle, D1 and D2, and also we have two value of R, which is R1 and R2. So, so kita ada dua duty cycle, D1, D2, and also two R, R1 and R2. So, in order to proceed in finding the value of your um, inductor, the value of your capacitor, uh, your average inductor current, and, and semua-semua lah. Okay, uh, all the analysis. Okay, you need to make sure you fulfill all this combination. For the first combination, kita ada D1 and R1, which is you use the value of D1 and R1 only. Then I make value D2, R2. Okay, so you get the first combination here. So let's say you want to calculate value of L, inductor current, capacitor, use this D1 and R1 only. Okay, don't switch with the other duty cycle, value of duty cycle and the other R. So, so for the second combination, kita akan guna D2. Still, we are referring to the same R, which is R1. Okay. The third combination, okay, we are referring to R2 pula as a reference. So, D1, R2. Okay, and the fourth combination is D2, R2. Okay, I will show this again uh, in the third example so that you'll be able to have a better view on what is uh, being explained here. Okay. Right. For the exercise number two over here, okay, a boost converter produce an output voltage that is greater or equal to the input voltage. So refer to the parameter that being uh, listed in the table here. Okay, we need to find first what is the mode of operation. Okay, uh, so from this example over here, L is already been given. Okay, so once uh, L is given, so you need to find the mode of the operation. So you need to make sure um, or you need to identify whether uh, your computer does it um, operate in CCM or in DCM. So that is what does it mean by this question over here, determine the mode of operation. So how to do, uh, how to determine this mode of operation? Okay, you need to um, identify what is the parameter that, um, that what we call that determine the boundary between CCM and DCM, which is your value of L min or your IL min, these two value, yeah? Okay. Um, okay, and then for the second part of this question, you need to find a range of the R, okay, for the commuter to remain in continuous conduction mode. Okay, all right. So, although this is 
Okay, here also R is already been given 20 ohm. But you need to make sure. If let's say that this 20 ohm, do my converter operate in CCM or in TCM? So you need to make sure of that. All right, so we need to check what is the range for the R. Okay, right. So for the uh, solution on for this exercise over here. Okay, first thing you need to find your duty cycle. Right. So um, in the par in the table, the, uh, your output voltage, V0 is not given. Okay, kita tak ada V0 ni, kita ada input voltage, output power, R load, um, or inductor L and also your switching time. Okay, switching time here is actually uh, T will be equal to 1 over switching frequency. So if let's say that you need to find the question asks you to find your switching frequency so you already know how to find the switching frequency. Okay. Alright. So, um, so from this duty cycle equation, we do not know the value of V0. But we do uh, give, uh, it's been given the other value which is your output voltage and R. So use the power equation in order to find your V0. So you will get V0 equals to 30. Volt. So you can substitute inside your duty cycle equation um, to find your duty cycle. So 30 minus 12 over 30, you will get 0 0.6 duty cycle. All right. Okay, for step number two, okay, um, we haven't answered uh, any of the question that being asked yet. So this is where we're going to answer the question. Okay. Um, which is in part one, we need to uh, determine the mode of operation. Okay, how to determine the mode of operation? You need to calculate your L mean first. If your given L is greater than L mean, this will confirm that your converter is operated in continuous conduction mode or CCM. So, kita, we need to find our L mean. So, we need to find our L mean. So, substitute all the value. Uh, into L min equation, okay, uh, L min RK over 2 multiplied by 1 minus D to the power of 2 multiplied by D. So, substitute semua nilai. So, the value for L min uh, is 19.2 micro Henry, okay, 19.2 micro Henry. So, kita compare balik. So, L yang diberi dekat dalam soalan is Okay, L, the, the one that being given is 55 microhenry. So, obviously, this 55 microhenry is greater than our L min, 19.2 microhenry. So, okay, this will uh, confirm that our converter is operated in continuous induction mode. All right? Okay. Um, there is also another way by using uh, IL mean equation we set into zero. So if let's say that you be able to get uh, IL mean equals to zero or negative, this is also uh, able to um, confirm that your computer is operated in CCM or in DCM. Okay. <clears throat> right. So for uh, step number three, you, we need to find, uh, this is in order to answer for part two, uh, the range of resistor. So in order to find uh, the value of R, the range of R, okay, we need to use IL mean equation. So what uh, it mentioned in the question, um, you, we need to de determine the value of R um, uh, to remain the computer in CCM, right? So we need to know what are the the, the set point of R. So we will use this uh, IL mean equation, <coughs> sorry, set into zero. Okay, so you substitute, okay, leave the R here. Jangan ambil yang dekat dalam example yang 20 ohm tu eh. Because 20 ohm, we already know that. Kita nak cari R, the range of R, apa R yang sepatutnya um, apa, become the boundary. Okay. You masukkan all the rest of the value, okay. Uh, L ni ambil from the equation ni, jangan ambil L min. Kau tak awak akan dapat kosong. So it doesn't help you, okay. So ambil L, L yang the one that been given in the question. Alright, so substitute the value and then rearrange the, um, the uh, equation and take out the R. 
Okay, R that we you should get is 57.25 ohm. Okay, 57.25 ohm. This is um, is the boundary value of R. Okay, so if, okay, for R name, okay, um, in order to make sure that the converter is operated in CCM, which is always continuous, okay, you need to make sure the uh, whatever value of R that you are using must be less than the boundary value here. Okay, so uh, if let's say that R is less than 57.25, Okay, this will ensure your computer will be operated, uh, operated in CCM. If R is greater than 57.25, your computer will fall into DCM mode. Okay, okay why is that kita make this sign less than? Because you can see that your R here is at the denominator side. So if I say that R is bigger here, obviously you will get a smaller uh, value, right? So that's why um, we will, um, work. this is the range of the R that you should get. Okay, so given in the question, R will be equals to 20 ohm. So 20 ohm compared with the, the boundary R, which is 57.25. Uh, so obviously it's less than our boundary R. So this will Confirm that your computer is operated in continuous conduction mode or CCM. Okay. Any question on this example number two? Uh, other part yang I need to repeat it back ke? Macam mana? Okay. Okay ke? Okay. 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 okay eh? Alright. Apa dia? Alah. Okay, ya. Yeah. Uh, kejap, saya tengok. Ada... Uh, jangan pakai you mobile. <laughs> okay. Um, 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 um. Right. Oh, tak ada apa ni. Tak ada apa persoalan. Cuma tanya ni je, eh. Okay. Okay, alright. Sure. Okay, we proceed with the, uh, the third example. Okay, uh, this example over here is a past year exam question, I think 2016 code if I'm not mistaken. Alright, um, so uh, this uh, access number three here, uh, it can help you um, in doing your OEL. Okay, uh, partial lah. Satu lagi partial tu, um, say, I'll let you to do it by yourself. Okay, alright. Okay, in this example over here, okay, um, okay, mention here a DC to DC converter. So you need to know, eh, katalah this circuit over here, kalau katalah I mention here is only DC to DC converter, you need to make sure by looking at this circuit over here, uh, is it bulk converter? Is it boost converter? Is it bulk boost converter? So you need to, uh, at least you need to familiarize with the position of the switch, the diode, the inductor and so on. So by looking at this circuit over here, this is a bulk converter. Okay, okay. The bulk converter we have the switch will be connected. Okay, directly to your input voltage. Okay, all right. Um, all right. So in this example over here, your input voltage is varies uh, between sixty to. 50 to 60, so 50 to 60, your input voltage. Okay, your output voltage is maintained at 20 or uh, 20 volt. Okay, your load, okay, P out is varied from 75 watt to 125 watt. Okay, and then the switching frequency here, uh, 50 kilohertz. Okay, uh, okay, okay, and the output voltage ripple is 1.5 percent okay so uh you need to find here determine the suitable value of inductor and capacitor so you need to find what is the suitable value of the capacitor and inductor uh, in order to provide continuous current for every possible operating condition okay all right first thing first find duty cycle 
Okay, always remember that. First step is you need to find your duty cycle D. Okay, um, D1 will be equals to V0 over Vs. Ini untuk, this is equation untuk bulk eh. Untuk boost tadi lain tau equation dia. So make sure, so that is why it's very important for you. First, you identify what uh, uh, what type of circuit uh, for this converter is it bulk or is it boost or is it bulk boost and then baru you boleh uh, take out the what are the equation um, with regards to bulk what are the equation with regard to boost and what are the equation with regards to bulk boost so for the list of equation don't worry uh, it's uh, will be given um, during your test or you, during your final exam Okay, cumanya kena, you need to make sure lah uh, I might jumble up um, equation so awak kena tahu lah for this equation is it for bulk, is it for boost Okay, so uh, or maybe I just put it lah um, Okay, this is equation for bulk, this is equation for boost to help you Alright, okay um, So since we have two input voltage that being varied Okay, Vs1 here and Vs2 here, so we'll have two duty cycle. So D1 will be equals to 0 0.4 and D2 will be equals to 0 0.33. Alright, okay, second step. Okay, this is uh, because we have uh, V0 is a varied yeah, from 75 to 125. So since your um, what we call output voltage is maintained constant, so V0 is fixed, so obviously the only affected element is your R. So your R will be varied. So you have two value of R, R1 and R2. So use the power equation in order to get the value for your resistor. Uh, R1 equals to 5.33 ohm, R2 equals to 3.2 ohm. Okay, so once the dapat R, okay, we can proceed with the next one. Okay, the, the third step. Okay, you need to find your average inductor current IL. Okay, for bulk converter, your IL equals to I0. Okay, this is for bulk, eh? for boost converter is different kan? Tadi boost converter is um, apa? Vs. Where is it? The boost converter. Okay, Vs over 1. Minus T to power of 2 multiplied by R. This is for boost converter. For bulk converter, Vs equals to V0, uh, I0 equals to V0 over R. This is for bulk. For bulk boost, is slightly different. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so for the um, induct average inductor current, IL, so kita ada two set two value of IL. Okay, IL one will be equals to uh, V naught is twenty over R. So since kita ada R one and R two, you can substitute inside here in order to get two value of inductor current. Okay, IL one will be equals to three point seven five ampere, and IL two will be equals to six point two five ampere. Okay, so far so good. Um, any any question? Okay, girl. Good, good. Okay, all right. Okay. Um. Okay. The first step. Okay, we need to find the almin. Okay. Um. Okay, we find uh all the almin since kita ada um what we call R one uh and also D one so R one. Okay. So the first combination here, you use these two value, uh, R, D1, R1, okay, and then D2, R1, D1, okay. Okay, to, okay, so for Elmin number one, which is we are referring to this the first combination here of d1 r1 here substitute the value you will get 31.98 microhenry 
for L mean number 2 which is combination of D2 R2 over here right you will get uh, 35.71 microhenry for L mean number 3 combination of D1 and R2 you will get 90.2 microhenry for the fourth combination D2 R2 you will get 21.44 microhenry Okay, among these two four value, uh, ini I would gonna select only one because there is only one inductor in the circuit, kan? Tengok kat sini eh. Ni ada satu saja kat sini. And one uh, inductor and one capacitor. That's why you need to select among whatever value of um, you already been ca uh, calculate. Select only one. So how to do the selection? Okay. Normally, we uh, among these four value, we will select the highest one. Sebab kita nak make sure that our converter will be operated in CCM. And that whatever value that we select, able to cover for all operating condition. So let's say, katalah kita ambil, okay, among these uh, four value of inductor, we the highest one is the element number two, kan? Alright. Untuk eh after L mean number two is the highest one, so we pick up this one here. Alright, so thirty five point seven one, you multiply by one point two five, you will get forty four point six four microhenry. Okay, why is that the, we are selecting the highest value? So if let's say that okay, L mean number two is using this uh, combination of D one and R one. So if let's say that we want to simulate using the force combination over here, D2 and R2, okay? So we need to make sure that, um, okay, um, if let's say that uh, whatever value of inductor that we are using must be um, greater than the L mean that being calculated here. So that's why we are selecting the highest one. Okay, let's say kita lah, contoh, eh? okay, katalah kita select L mean satu. Okay, L mean 1, 31.98. Uh, so whenever we go for the second combination, let's say if kita nak simulate uh, duty cycle equals to 0. Point, uh, berapa eh? Can't remember. D2 eh? Okay, when D2, uh, when duty cycle equals to D2 and R equals to R1. Okay, L mean dia, dia the minimum paling cikai dia ni adalah uh, 35.71 uh, micro Henry. So, this one is smaller than 35. Obviously lah, if you are using this um, L1, if you are selecting L min number 1, your computer will fall into this continuous conduction mode. Okay? Okay. Uh, tapi, if let's say that, okay, we don't have this L min number 2. Katalah kita tak ada value ni. So, we have L1, uh, L min 1, L min 3 and L min 4 only. So let's say, uh, apa using, uh, so if let's say that we are simulating using the third combination which is D1R1 over here, okay, we know that the minimum required uh, inductor is 19.2 microhenry. So obviously you already supply more than what what is the minimum requirement. So your computer, uh, you can confirm that your computer is in CCM. And same goes with uh, element number 4 over here. So that is why we are selecting the highest one. Okay, because uh, once we uh, put this, let's say we select this two value, and then we simulate uh, back for the other combination, this four combination you need to uh, simulate, okay, using the one value that you are um, selecting, okay, and you need to confirm that using the, the value of L that you are selecting, your computer must be in CCM. Okay, right. So, um, okay, the final step. So we need to find the value for the capacitor. Okay, the value for the capacitor here, this is for bulk. Eh? Okay, untuk bulk, you can see that uh, equation for bulk uh, in finding the value for the capacitor in, is one minus D over eight multiplied by output voltage ripple, multiplied by switching frequency to the power of 2. There is no R in this equation. Can. 
Okay, but if let's say that for boost converter, kita ada, uh, so uh, we have R in uh, in finding the capacitor for both converter. So, katalah, um, in this, this is the, uh, what we call question using boost converter, uh, there will be four lah, four value of capacitor. Okay, so since this is bulk converter and there is no R inside this capacitor equation, see, so that's why the only variation is with regards to this duty cycle over here. So that's why we will get only two value of capacitor, C1 and C2. C1 will be equals to 44.8 microfarad and C2 will be equals to 50.03 microfarad. Okay, uh, for capacitor, no problem. You can select either one. Um, okay, um, you can select either 44 or 50 microfarad, no problem, okay. If let's say that you are selecting the higher value, it will be better because uh, the amount of ripple will be reduced significantly and the quality of your output voltage and your output current will be cleaner and smoother, okay. But bear in mind, higher value of capacitor will lead you to um, increase in terms of losses and it will uh, affect your efficiency. Okay. All right. Any question with regard to this example? No. No. Senanglah kerja saya macam ni. Okay.